Right, uh, good morning uh, to all. So we will uh, today continue with our lecture of uh, chapter 6, right? Okay, so last week we have already covered actually uh, chapter 5. Okay, uh, and then uh, as usual, all the recording of the video, uh, I've already attached, I already uh, uploaded it on YouTube. Okay, so if you uh, miss the class or you need uh, further clarification on the video, uh, I've already attached the link to the videos in our Teams as well. Okay, so today we're going to go to uh, chapter 6. So we are a little bit rushing because we are now in week 12 and we left another three chapters. But actually, uh, today chapter will be the somewhat the last chapter that involve a little bit of calculation while chapter 7 and 8 is more or less a reading chapter so it's not that difficult just that uh, chapter 6 shall be like the last chapter which involve a little bit of engineering knowledge as well as uh, how we are talking about uh, the reactor design when we have a reaction of which there are changes of temperature so previously we only address uh, our talking about reactions in the reactor of which there are no temperature changes meaning your inlet temperature and your reactor temperature is the same meaning let's say uh, you pump in your reactant at minute zero let's say at uh, 40 celsius throughout the whole reaction the reactors are maintained at the same temperature however as you know uh, it's not necessarily that case. Okay, there are always uh, situations of scenario of which the reactor temperature is no longer the same as the reactant temperature, or we call it uh, the inlet temperature. So in this case, we have to address uh, this uh, problem or this consideration when it comes to our reactor design. Okay, so why is this important? Why do we need to address the issue of which uh, if there is a temperature change in the reactor. Okay, that's why chapter 6, we call it as non-isothermal reactor design because we're talking about where are cases where the temperature, the reactor temperature is no longer the same as the inlet temperature, right? So why this is important in the reactor design is because basically uh, the reactor the reaction temperature will affect the reactor design in terms of the volume or in another word the easiest way to explain temperature affects conversion so when you affect conversion automatically it will affect as well the reactor volume okay so whenever you have uh, i'm talking about doing a reaction in a reactor you have to really consider a lot of aspects okay you have to consider like we learned previously uh, the changes of pressure and now today we address what happened if there are changes of temperature during the reaction. Okay, now uh, in the previous slide, I talked about how the reactor temperature, uh, sorry, the temperature, the reactor temperature affects the reactor design. Okay, so how does this uh, disturbs or how does it affect our calculation? Because when we talk about reactor design, okay, mainly we're talking about finding the volume, meaning how much volume of the reactor is needed if you would like to run this reaction. So we have to then see to uh, in the calculation itself, how does it affect? Okay, so for example, in this scenario, let's say we have a CSTR, okay, we have a continuous third tank reactor. It is an exothermic liquid reaction. So I hope uh, by now you understand we have exothermic, we have endothermic. So endo always means absorb, exo always means release. So endothermic means your, the reaction is absorbing heat or energy. Exothermic means the reaction is releasing heat or releasing energy. Okay, so in this case, this reaction uh, requires heat. Okay, so this is called, and, uh, sorry, this reaction releases heat. This is called exothermic. Uh, of first order that occurs adiabatically. Okay, so it says no heat loss or gain in the system. So this is an adiabatic system. Okay, so if you are not familiar, uh, you have learned previously in thermodynamics or in tra heat transfer, we have adiabatic and non-adiabatic. So adiabatic, the simplest definition, there are no heat loss or gain from the reactor. Okay, system two means reactor. Lah. So there's no heat supply or no heat loss for the reactor. So we call this as adiabatic. So vice versa, if it's non-adiabatic, meaning there are heat supplied or heat loss from the system. 
Okay, so in this case, they kata sekarang they assume uh, ada batik, right? So, when we all compile this information in form of equation, you will see that the first equation is always the design equation, okay, uh, which is to find the volume of the CSTR, which equals to FA not X per minus RA. So this is the basic general design equation if you would like to find the volume of CSTR. Okay, next, let's say they gave us, okay, the information says the rate law uh, equals to minus RA equals to KCA. Okay, so you must understand. Rate law is particularly pertaining to the reaction. So every reaction uniquely has its own rate law. So for this reaction, it, the rate law is, uh, the reaction is first order with respect to A. That's why you get minus RA equals to KCA. Okay, now, that's an issue here because previously, if you realize, uh, the K value is always, uh, in, uh, K, the reaction rate constant, K, is affected by temperature. Meaning, if there's a change of temperature, your value of K will change. So previously, from chapter 1 to chapter 5, we only address when there are no temperature changes in the reactor during the reaction because it's isothermal. So meaning the value of K is always the same the moment you place your reactant in the reactor at that temperature, uh, it doesn't change. So the value of K also doesn't change. So you can use that value of K in your calculation. However, now we have an issue because now we are talking about non-isothermal. So we talk about non-isothermal, this value of K is no longer constant. The value of K is dependent on your now, on your, the reactor temperature or we can also call it the reaction temperature. So now the K, instead of writing it just as K, the value, I have to put it in the terms of Arrhenius equation because this equation 3, K equals to A exponential minus EA per RT is the Arrhenius equation that address the changes of K with temperature. So now, kita dah tak letak just value of K. We have to put K in terms of an Arrhenius equation. Okay, so next one. Of course, when we talk about uh, concentration of A, CA is concentration of A in the reactor during the reaction, we will always uh, term it in the, in the form of CA0 in bracket 1 minus X because we always find the concentration in the reactor in terms of initial concentration of A and also the conversion of A in the reactor, which is X. Okay, so now. Let's say we combine equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, equation 4. So we see when we combine, you will get the final equation now becomes, okay, volume CSTR equals to FA not X per A exponential minus EA per RT CA not in bracket 1 minus X. Okay, so now you can see that I have one equation. So let us now investigate what is the problem now when we have one equation of which we want to find the volume of CSTR. So you know in mathematics, okay, whenever you want to solve uh, unknowns, if you have only one equation, okay, you must only have one unknown. Then the equation and the problem can be solved. But if you have more than one unknown at the same time, Okay, and you only have one equation, then the equation, the problem can never be solved. So this is called as a degree of freedom analysis. The concept, kalau saya ada dua unknown, I need at least two equation. So if I have three unknown, three equation. So if you have number of equation less than your unknown, sampai bila-bila pun memang you cannot solve because it means that uh, the, you ha don't have enough equations to solve the number of unknown that you have. Okay, so in this case, let's investigate. Okay, so since I want to find the volume of CSTR, meaning to say the volume is the one unknown that I want to solve. So on the left hand side is the unknown I want to solve. Technically, every unknown in the right hand side of the equation, yang warna merah ni, on the right hand side, all the unknowns I must already know. If I cannot find it, then I can never find the volume of CSTR. So let us go one by one. So the first one is FA0. So FA0, initial molar flow rate of A, which I will definitely know because that's what I said during the reaction. Okay, so if not, I know. Okay, next, conversion. Uh, so conversion is also a problem because I would not know the conversion because as you remember, the reaction temperature influences the conversion. 
So conversion is becomes one more unknown that I would not know. I would not be able to determine preliminary because that's one thing that it depends on temperature. So X becomes the second unknown that I don't know. So bottom, you have A. A is a pre-exponential factor. So A pre-exponential factor always relies on the reaction, meaning, meaning in simpler words, if uh, you know the reaction, the A value is always the same because the A value is depending on the reaction. As long as you don't change any the reactants, so on and so forth, okay, you still have the same mechanism of reaction, the value of your A is the same. So A is something that we can obtain or we can find first. So A is, is a known variable. Okay, done. So in bracket, minus Ea per Rt, exponential minus Ea per Rt. Ea activation energy. Activation energy is also the same. It's exclusive to the reaction, meaning they are not tied to the reactor, they are tied to the reaction, meaning it just depends on the reaction. So if you want to run the same reaction in CSD arc, PF arc, batch, A and Ea is still the same. Selagi so, you don't change the reactant or you don't change the nature of the reaction or the mechanism of reaction. Selagi so, mechanism is sama, whenever, whatever system you run, A and EA is still the same. So meaning I can find it or I can obtain it initially. Uh, the information can be obtained. So it is a known variables. Okay, next R. R of course, you know, gas constant. So next is temperature. So temperature also another another unknown because again I said uh, this is non isothermal. We do not know the temperature in the reactor right now. So T becomes another unknown. So we have now on the right hand side I have two unknown that supposedly I'm supposed to find first, but right now it has it become a problem for me. Temperature T and X conversion. So next C A naught. So C A of course, initial concentration of A is what I prepared. I will know it's a known variable in bracket 1 minus X. So another time X is there. So now uh, we have very really determined in order us for us to find the volume CSTR. Okay, on the right hand side, we have complication because we have another tool unknown that we still do not know. So this problem cannot be solved. So whenever, however I do this equation, I can never solve it unless I can solve temperature and conversion first. I know this too, then only I can find the volume. Okay, so now we are stuck with this. Okay, so as I told you previously, when you have this scenario in any engineering problems, when you have more unknowns than your equation, your only solution is you have to find or elucidate or determine additional equation. So of course, additional equation is tak boleh sebarangan lah. So you have to find from your information that you have what are the other equation that can be used to solve some of the unknowns yang kamu tak tahu. Contohnya dalam kes ni, I have T and X that I don't know. So by right, I'm supposed to find another equation that correlates T and X. Means lagi saya tak boleh solve T, saya tak boleh solve X. I can never solve the volume of CSTR. So what happened is, uh, that's what the purpose of learning chapter 6 because chapter 6 okay we will be introduced to a new equation or additional equation which we obtain from the energy balance so so happen we learn the concept of energy balance uh, basically the first law of thermodynamics so from this first law of thermodynamics okay they have modified the equation or they have elucidated an equation that correlates temperature and conversion in the reactor meaning let's say you know or you have you have a targeted conversion of your a okay from the equation you can use it to find the reaction or the reactor temperature or vice versa let's say you know the reactor temperature you can use the equation to find the conversion of the reactor so by using this supplementary or this additional equation, which is the energy balance equation, we can correlate temperature and conversion. So when we obtain these two value, then subsequently we can find the volume of the reactor. Okay, so now we come into how do we obtain this energy balance equation? Okay, so this energy balance equation is from the first law of thermodynamics where they address uh, as you know, right? the first law of thermodynamics, you have in, you have out, you have to consider as well a few other factors. You know that when it comes to energy, when it comes to heat, 
you have to consider the heat from the system or from the reactor. Okay, uh, sorry, from the reaction. You have to also address if you are supplying heat to the system or to the reactor. So you remember, certain reaction it needs heat, right? Endothermic reaction, they perlukan energy, they perlukan heat. So in this type of, in this type of reaction, we will then supply heat to the reactor. So kita pun kena address juga itu. Next one, uh, system will do will have some work done by the system. For example, if we have a CSTR. Okay, the work done by the stirrer, because the stirrer has work done also. That also have to be considered in the equation. Okay, so when you have all this consideration, okay, up at the end of it, they came up with this equation. Okay, so this equation is quite long and basically we're going to learn for the next two hours. How do we solve this equation? Because this equation, you can see we have a lot of uh, water bursts. Yang kita kena solve before we can use it. Okay, but before I start explaining on the re, uh, equation, you have to first understand again to cap recap what are the purpose of this equation. So the purpose are to correlate temperature and conversion. So you see, I already in the equation. You can see the red font T is for the temperature, the reactor temperature. X is for the conversion. Okay, so concept there. If I have targeted conversion, I use this convert. I use this equation to find temperature, or vice versa. If I know my reactor temperature, I will use this equation to find conversion. Okay, so the conversion, the equation states, okay, Q minus WS. I will explain later, uh, in details. Minus FA naught summation theta I CPI in bracket. T minus T naught. So you see, interestingly here, because this is non isothermal, so you see T is no longer equals to T naught. So sebelum ni kalau isothermal T sama dengan T naught, non isothermal dah the temperature already changes. So you can see here we have T, we have T naught. Then it minus F A naught X in bracket. This is heat of reaction at reference temperature plus delta Cp, heat capacity at constant pressure, in bracket, T minus Tr, close bracket, equals to zero. So, equation dia very long, tapi concept dia, either I know T, I find X, or I know X, I find T. So, maksudnya, sama juga concept, keseluruhan equation tu, akan hanya ada satu unknown, depending on what you want to solve. So, let's say I want to solve X. So, the rest punya unknown tu dah kena tahu nilai dia, baru kita dapat X. Or let's say kita nak cari T. So, the other unknown all have to be solved. Then only you can find T from the equation. Okay. So, now we go one by one because we have to understand equation ni dah panjang. And the equations in the, uh, the variables in the equation sometimes may need sub-equation lagi. Means, kamu kena solve dulu beforehand the sub-equation, then only you substitute into the main equation. Okay, so that's equation ni ada satu chapter, just dedicated, one specific chapter dedicated to this equation. Sebab equation ni dia ada sub lagi equation, and most of the time, you have to solve the sub-equation Baru kamu ganti dalam main equation, then only you can solve the problem. Okay, so I go one by one. So first one, I have Q. So Q is uh, heat added to the reactor when it's necessary to heat up a reaction. So this is the case where it's non-adiabatic sebab let's say your reaction needs heat to be added to the reactor. So, this always addresses endothermic reaction lah. So, endothermic reaction, they perlukan harbor. So, now you are supplying heat to the reactor or you are supplying energy to the reactor. So, when you are doing this, this is non adiabatic you have to include this in your energy balance calculation under Q. We call it as Q. Okay. Now, to calculate Q, the heat to add it to the reactor, they are different... Uh, equation depending on your system. So if you're talking about CSTR, then the equation here. PFR pun ada equation here. And you must remember that uh, it also influenced by certain parameters. For example, flow rate of your heating fluid also may influence the type of equation. 
Okay. Uh, but for our lesson or for our chapter six, we address a very straightforward. We address only for CSTR. So let's say that you have a CSTR. You are supplying heat to the CSTR. Okay. So the Q can be calculated using the equation of which equals to UA in bracket TA minus T to top bracket. So let me repeat again. To calculate Q, dia bukan satu equation sahaja. Dia ada banyak equation sebenarnya sebab ia bergantung kepada a few scenarios. So, of course, it's impossible to list out all the equation, right? So, let's say you want to apply it later in your life, you have to really know your system. You have to know as well the certain other parameters. Dia kan biasanya adalah flow rate of your uh, heating fluid, the type of your heating fluid also influence the calculation of Q. But regardless macam mana pun, okay, Uh, the equation is used to calculate Q. Okay, dalam kes ni, senario ni, kita guna contoh just CSTR. Okay, and it's given as UA in bracket TA minus T. So, what is this? So, first, so kamu tengok sekarang dalam equation ada Q. So, Q tu nak kira kena ada sub equation. Means kamu kena kira dulu nilai Q, baru ganti dalam the original equation. So, U refers to overall heat transfer coefficient of the jacket. So, you always know, right? When you have a vessel, the reactor vessel, uh, if you need a heating or sometimes you need cooling jacket, so there will be another outer vessel, outside, uh, outer vessel of your reactor or which they will flow the heating, uh, the heating or cooling fluid. So, depending lah, you may use water, you may use oil, you may use steam, so on and so forth, depending on your reactor temperature. Okay, so, this jacket punya overall heat transfer coefficient will be your U. So, of course, the overall heat transfer coefficient ni bergantung kepada your material of your jacket. Material of your jacket. Because, you know, different material akan ada different overall heat transfer coefficient because you know different material, different thermal properties so maka nilai U pun berlainan. So later let's say if you are designing reactor, you have to really consider the material, the design of your heat uh, heating jacket or your cooling jacket of your reactor. So next one, A. A is the heat exchange area. Okay, so what is your heat exchange area of your heating or cooling jacket? In this case, we are talking about heating jacket lah. Uh, the heat exchange area. So let's say if you are using steam as your heating fluid. So it will be the steam jacket area lah. So kalau kamu guna oil or jacket area. If you are using water, water jacket area. So basically sama je konsep dia. Just nak tahu keluasan of which the heat exchange will occur. Because the heat from the heating fluid will be transferred to your vessel which the reactor takes place, the reaction takes place. And next one in bracket, TA minus T. So TA refers to your heat transfer fluid inlet temperature. So dia kan pemindahan haba daripada heat transfer fluid kepada reactor. So TA tu refers to your heat transfer fluid punya inlet temperature. So let's say kalau kamu guna Uh, steam. So, it will be the steam punya saturation temperature. If you actually use oil, so it will be the oil inlet temperature. If you use water, the water inlet temperature. Then minus T. So, T is the reactor temperature or the reaction temperature. So, kalau kamu nampak, the equation, it will write TA minus T, meaning your heat transfer fluid punya temperature will always be higher than your reactor temperature because heat heat exchange is not 100% efficient. Mesti akan ada uh, kehilangan haba or the loss of energy. So that's why the temperature of your heat transfer fluid will always be higher than the temperature in your reactor itself. Okay, so that's one sub equation to calculate just for the value of Q. So later we will do an example for us to better understand this concept. So, Next one in the equation, WS. So, WS refers to work shaft, which, which is uh, work done by the reactor. So, sama concept. Work done by the reactor depends on the type of reactor that you are using. You are talking about uh, CSTR. The work done by the reactor is basically the work done by the stirrer. Okay, CSTR is the stirrer. The work done by the stirrer is the one that we consider in this 
energy balance calculation. However, kalau let's say you have PFR, PFR tak ada But there are still work done by the system which is turbine. Okay, kalau PFR ada turbine, so the work done by the turbine will be considered in the energy balance calculation under WS. However, let, before I proceed, this WS, the work done by the reactor or the system, is considered negligible ataupun nilai dia terlampau kecil or deemed insignificant in comparison to the other variables dalam equation ni. Meaning, in comparison to Q, in comparison to the heat of reaction, so on and so forth, this WS is often too small so that most of the time is deemed negligible. Tetapi dia mesti dalam equation sebab Tak semestinya dalam semua case, WS ni is deemed negligible. It depends on your system as well. Okay, so that's why it stay included in the react in the equation, although at times it is deemed negligible. So next one is uh, uh, FA0, so FA0 you know lah, inlet molar flow rate of E. So next one, so this part, summation theta I CPI in bracket T minus T0. Okay, so this part is actually to address the heat initially ataupun heat flow initially yang dalam reactor itu. Sebab kita kena kena buat uh, kan energy balance, right? So energy balance ni, sekarang this term is to consider the heat from the flow of the uh, reactant and the initial condition. Sebab tu calculation dia menjadi summation theta I CPI. Okay, so summation theta I CPI ni pun ada sub equation dia and the sub equation is also actually not a fixed equation sebab tu reaction is challenging in that sense is because dia dah ada equation but the equation is not fixed. Why? Because again, it depends on your reaction. Okay, so what do you mean by that? Okay, when I talk about summation, you know right, mathematically summation means you must plus plus plus. Jumlah. Jumlah tu means kita akan tambah 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. So, operational mathematics dia mesti tambah, 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 tambah. Okay, tambah apa? Okay. So, if you have learned theta i sebelum ni, you have encountered in chapter 3. You have also encountered in chapter 4 the concept of theta b, theta i. What does it mean? Kalau kita nak kira theta b, concept dia adalah theta b is the ratio of Initial amount of B over initial amount of A. So, katakan dalam kes kamu, you have B as a reactant. Okay, you want to calculate theta B, it will be theta B equals to initial amount of B over initial amount of A. So, note that I say amount. So, amount tu means very general. Kenapa? Sebab amount tu, it depends on what you have the information. You may calculate theta B if you have the initial mole percent of B and A, initial mole fraction of B over A, initial concentration of B over A, initial molar flow rate of B over A. All these can be used to calculate theta B. Sebab tu saya guna amount. Sebab amount tu general. Kamu boleh kira menggunakan keperkatan, menggunakan molar flow rate, menggunakan mole fraction, menggunakan mole percent pun boleh untuk mengira theta B. But the idea dia mesti initial amount. Means kalau initially B tu tak ada, maka theta B tak boleh dikira. Sebab dia mesti uh, amount asal. A mesti akan ada sebab a is always our reactant, meaning initially amount of A will always be there. Amount of B depends. Kalau B bukan reactant, takkan ada lah. Okay. Similarly, untuk theta I, which is inert. Okay, let's say you know right, certain types of reaction, we have inert. Okay, so why do we have inert? Okay, simple example, if your reaction involve oxygen gas, but you use air. So you know kan, air besides oxygen gas, there is nitrogen gas. So nitrogen gas becomes the inert, means asal tindak balas tu, we have nitrogen gas, although they are not involved in the reaction, but they are in the system initially, or they are in the reactor initially. So it becomes an inert. So if you have that kind of inert, then you can calculate theta inert as well. So theta inert become initial amount of inert over initial amount of A. So amount tu sama, 
either more fraction of inert or uh, more fraction of inert and A, concentration of inert and A, initial molar flow rate of inert and A, sama konsep dia, dia masih hanya initial amount of inert over initial amount of A. So, kalau initially you don't have inert, maka you don't have to calculate theta I because it's only the case when they exist initially. So, other example of inert, let's say you are using your reactant and you re your reactant has impurities. So, katakan kamu tak guna hypurity, you have impurities. So, the impurities can be inert as well. Although the amount might not be significant, but you have to calculate as well because it affects the reaction, it affects the energy balance as well. Okay, so done. So, I already asked you on theta I. Okay, theta I, right. So, now, CP. So, CP, uh, of course, you have learned in uh, CPP, you have learned in uh, thermo, you have learned in transfer. CP requires to heat capacity at constant pressure. So, kamu kena tahu, every compound sebenarnya, dia ada dia punya heat capacity at constant pressure dia sendiri. We call it CP. So, dia ada dua. CP, CV. CV is heat capacity at constant volume. CP is heat capacity at constant pressure. So, in this case, we will use CP, heat capacity at constant pressure. So, the summer concept, CP hanya, CP ada untuk setiap compound ada nilai CP dia sendiri. Okay, so, you have to calculate summation of theta I CP I. Again, depends on your reaction. So, for example, on the left hand side, if I have a reaction of which I have two reactant to product. So, let's say I have reactant A, reactant B, and I produce the product of C and D, which is the common ones lah. Normally, kalau ada dua reactant, this is quite the common reaction. So, the summation of theta I, CPI, the small i is referring to the species, general species. So, species tu kamu kena decide apa species ataupun apa compound yang saya kena kira. Okay, so in this case, theta I, summation of theta I, CPI equals to first, CPA means heat capacity of A plus theta B CPB means the theta B that you calculated you have to multiply with the heat capacity of constant pressure B and if you have inert if kalau sistem kamu ada sebarang compound yang berfungsi sebagai inert ataupun erti kata lain, dia wujud pada waktu asal reaction. Regardless, involved or not involved in the reaction, they are in the reactor or in the system initially, you have to include it as theta I CPI of the inert. So, katakan inert ni nitrogen gas. So, kamu kena kira lah. Theta I, theta nitrogen, darab dengan CP nitrogen. So, technically, mungkin kamu nak, kamu akan a little bit confused. Technically, depan A ni pun ada theta A. Tetapi, theta A tu satu. Because theta A will be initial amount of A over initial amount of A. So, satu lah kan. Sebab tu dia tak tulis theta A, CP A. Because theta A is understood as one. Okay, so, this equation, kamu kena ingat. Kenapa kita ada nilai untuk B sebab in this example, B is a reactant. Inert punya nilai optional. Ada inert, kira. Tak ada inert, tak payah kira. Okay, now, if I go to the right hand side, sekarang katakan tindak bahasa saya dah berubah. Saya ada satu reactant sahaja which is A. And A react to form B and C. So, sekarang... Tengok B, kalau contoh sebelumnya, B was a reactant. Contoh yang ni saya dah jadikan B sebagai produk. Ataupun contoh kes ni, kita ada satu reactant, kita ada dua produk. Reactant dia A, produk dia B and C. So, the summation theta I CPI equals to CPA. CPA mesti akan ada sebab A adalah reactant. Dia mesti ada satu reactant. Minimum satu reactant. Maximum depending lah. Okay. So, CPA plus. If and only if, kalau kamu ada inert, then you will add the inert one. So, theta I, CP untuk inert. So, kalau, kalau kamu tengok the second example, dah tak ada B. Kenapa kita dah tak kira B? Sebab second example tu, B is no longer a reactant. Ataupun, erti kata senang, initially in the system, I only have A. 
and if I have inert. Kalau ada inert, saya tambah. Kalau tak ada, saya just kira untuk A sahaja. Saya dah tak kira untuk B. Dah tak kira untuk C. Sebab B and C, initially, they will not have any uh, any content or any composition yet. So, katakan you are confused. Nak kira ke tak nak kira, just ingat konsep. Kita kena kira tita tu dulu. So, tita tu mesti berdasarkan amount initial. Kalau saya tak ada amount initial tu, means saya tak dapat cari tita, means saya tak payah kira lah untuk summation tita I CPI. So, you can see another sub equation. So, tadi macam Q kita kira, kita ganti dalam main equation. Summation tita I CPI pun sama. Saya kira sub equation, saya ganti dalam main equation. So, next one is for Uh, temperature. So, dalam equation ni, if you realize, we have different uh, symbol for temperature. Semua pun T, tapi kita ada T, T A, T R, T naught. So, tadi yang T A kita dah belajar, T A kita learn, we learn is to calculate Q. Okay, T A tu adalah heat transfer fluid punya inlet temperature. So, of course, bila kita talk about heat transfer fluid, Mestilah nilai itu digunakan untuk kira Q. So, that why kita dah kita dah tahu. Okay, then next, T. So, T itu reaction temperature lah atau reactor temperature. Sama je konsep dia. T not is the initial temperature of your reactor. Sebab dia dah non-isotherma, T dah tak sama T not. So, T not tu dah suhu asal before you run the reaction. What is that initial temperature? We call it as T not. So next one, TR. So TR is what we call as reference temperature. So reference temperature ni apa? Okay, later, we will need to calculate these two important value. Heat of reaction at reference temperature and delta Cp. So nilai Cp dan nilai heat of reaction ni sebenarnya, again, dia akan very specific kepada certain temperature. Means, Katakan, you get the value from property table. The property table will always state nilai ini is obtained at what reference temperature. So, that reference temperature you must use in the calculation. So, usually, standard property table depends lah. If they use SI unit, because sometimes they use American engineering unit. Depends on your property table, you know. It really depends on which table you're referring. Okay. So, most of the time, although I would not say all the time, the reference temperature is 25 Celsius most of the time. But not necessarily means 25. Okay, depends on the property table that you use or you refer in your calculation. Okay, so that will be your TR. Okay, so next one, okay, I have already clarified on the temperature. We will go to the last part. Okay, next is, again, you can see FA0. So, F A0 ni mestilah initial molar flow rate of A. So, ada nilai dia, kamu ganti. Next is X. X adalah conversion. Pentinglah sebab equation ni kan digunakan untuk correlate temperature, reaction temperature or reactor temperature to your conversion. So, mestilah ada term conversion X. Mestilah ada term T, temperature. Okay, so done. So, itu kita dah boleh solve. Next one, the red one. Heat of reaction at reference temperature. So, you must understand, reaction may release heat or may need heat. Okay, depending lah. Endotermy, exotermy kan? So, you have to consider that in the terms of the heat of reaction at reference temperature. Okay, now, how do we obtain this value? Okay, sebelum kita pergi lagi jauh, clarify dulu. Heat of reaction, meaning heat either supplied or released from your reaction itself. It's very specific to the reaction that you are conducting. Okay, so most of the time, it depends. If your reaction are common reaction, you may obtain the heat of reaction directly from literature. But when you want to use the value, you have to really ensure it's the same reaction as what you are running. So, for example, katakan the reaction is called as uh, macam contoh ammonia production lah, Haber-Bosch reaction. It's very common. People know Haber-Bosch reaction tu nitrogen gas dengan hydrogen gas masukkan ammonia. That Haber-Bosch reaction, okay, katakan you are running that Haber-Bosch reaction, you can always obtain from literature or from Google or from property tables. You just uh, type Haber-Bosch reaction, you'll be able to obtain the heat of reaction easily. So, 
if your reaction are the common ones, okay, you can and may obtain the heat of reaction directly from literature. But let's see, your reaction is somewhat new or you would like to actually just reconfirm the literature, you may also calculate by yourself. Meaning, tak semestinya kamu hanya boleh dapat pada literature. Katakan kamu punya reaction ni something yang baru. Ataupun, uh, kamu nak just verify betul tak nilai heat of reaction tu, you can actually calculate by yourself as well. Okay, so dalam senario ni, kalau kamu diberi nilai tu directly, kamu katakanlah kita nak keluarkan soalan dalam test ke dalam exam. If you are given the value, the heat of reaction at reference temperature directly, you can you can use it directly. Or if you are not provided by Vivid, you may calculate using what we call as enthalpy of formation method. Ataupun saya... Uh, you know the H, sometimes we call enthalpy, sometimes we call heat, sama je lah maksud dia, okay. We can use the heat of formation or the enthalpy of formation method to calculate the heat of reaction. Okay, so how, what do I mean by that? Okay, tadi saya kata heat of formation, okay. Kamu kena faham, every compound, you have to understand, every compound, sama macam CP tau, dia pun ada dia punya own heat of formation at the reference temperature. Contohnya katakan, you look at the property table, uh, most of the time, dia akan bagi heat of formation ni untuk compound ni dalam bentuk uh, at 25 Celsius punya reference temperature. Ataupun arti kata lain, heat of formation refers to, let's say you look for property table, uh, ammonia, heat of formation dia adalah 25,000 kilojoule per mole. Apa maksud dia? Maksudnya, for the compound to exist at 25 Celsius, 1 atm, dia termasuk pressure sekali, untuk dia terbentuk pada 25 Celsius, 1 atm, how much heat yang dia perlukan? Tak semestinya diperlukan ataupun dia bebaskan. Kalau nilai, kalau you check, the heat of formation is positive, means Amonia tu memerlukan 25,000 kilojoule per mole untuk terbentuk pada 25 Celsius 1 atm. But let's say you check the enthalpy formation tu negatif. Let's say negative 25,000. Maksudnya, amonia itu akan membebaskan 25,000 kilojoule per mole untuk dia terbentuk pada 25 Celsius 1 atm. So, using this heat of formation untuk setiap compound dalam reactant dan produk, kamu boleh guna nilai ni untuk kira heat of reaction dia. Tetapi dia ada certain uh, formula lah untuk kira dia. Okay, so to calculate the heat of reaction menggunakan heat of formation, dia punya formula, satu lagi uh, masalah dia, formula dia sama macam tadi yang kita ICPI. Formula dia unfortunately tak fix. Sebab, as usual, dia bergantung kepada your reaction. So, what do I mean by that? Okay. Now, heat of reaction, kalau kamu tengok, simbol matematik dia kat depan tu ada segitiga tu, that's delta, right? Okay, so, sometimes from the mathematics symbol, you can somewhat guess the operation of the calculation ataupun kamu boleh guess adakah dia penambahan, penolakan, pendarapan, pembahagian. Is it addition? Subtraction, multiplication, division. So why do I say that? When you say delta, the segitiga tu, delta always means changes ataupun differences in mathematics. So changes and differences always means there are something you gonna add, there are something you gonna subtract. Sebab beza kan, beza mesti ada yang beza yang kena tolak kan, ada yang kena tolak, ada yang kena tambah. In comparison tadi yang saya cakap pasal summation, summation tita I Uh, tita I CPI, summation tu jumlah. Jumlah tu mesti tambah-tambah-tambah. Kalau delta, beza, mesti ada yang tambah, mesti ada yang tolak. So, what do I mean by tambah and tolak? Okay. So, delta CP, uh, delta heat of reaction at a reference temperature, you will add the heat formation of product and you will subtract the heat formation of reactant. So, dalam reaction, konsep dia mesti yang positif adalah sentiasa produk, the negative akan sentiasa reactant. So, it becomes, katakan in your reaction, you have two reactant, two product. Reactant A, reactant B, 
product C, product D. So heat of reaction at reference temperature equals to D per A. So D per A ni adalah your stoichiometric coefficient ratio. So kamu kena include stoichiometric coefficient ratio untuk D over A multiplied by the heat formation of compound D which is our product D plus C per A the heat, the coefficient, the stoichiometric coefficient of C over stoichiometric coefficient of A multiply with heat formation of C minus B per A uh, against stoichiometric coefficient of B over stoichiometric coefficient of A multiply with heat formation of B minus technically A per A tapi A per A itu satu so we strike we write minus heat formation of A so you can see positive for the product, I will add heat formation of C, heat formation of D. I will minus heat formation of B, heat formation of A. Kenapa? Sebab in this example, A and B adalah reactant. Okay, now, you may ask, tadi bila kita kira summation theta I CPI, we include inert. Sebab kita kata anything yang ada initial amount, kita akan include dalam calculation summation theta I CPI. But what about this heat of reaction? So let's say you are confused or you are not too sure. So just remember two logics. Logic pertama, of course, when you talk about heat of reaction, definitely lah inert takkan dikira sebab tindak balas kan, haba tindak balas. Kita dah tahu konsep inert takkan terlibat dalam tindak balas. So automatically inert tak payahlah dikira untuk heat of reaction. Tu logik pertama. Logik kedua, let's say you... Terlepas pandang benda tu, part kedua, you realize in the equation, kita include the stoichiometric coefficient kan, kita include D per A, C per A, B per A, technically A per A. So, kalau kamu perasan, untuk inert, takkan ada stoichiometric coefficient sebab stoichiometric coefficient tu dah muncul daripada chemical equation ataupun persamaan tindak balas. Inert takkan ada dalam persamaan tindak balas because they are not involved in the reaction. So, you will not be able to obtain the inert stoichiometric coefficient. So, of course, automatically it means tak adalah dikira juga dalam heat of reaction for inert. So, there are two different logic yang kita boleh guna. If let's say we are confused, nak ke tak nak masukkan inert dalam calculation of the heat of reaction at reference temperature. Okay, so next one, on your right hand side, Let's see now your reaction is one reactant which is A and two product which is B and C. So dah berlainan tadi B was a reactant because we have two reactant. Kes yang kedua bila B sekarang dah menjadi produk sebab saya hanya ada satu reactant. So the heat of reaction at reference temperature become C per A heat formation of C dia masih positif untuk C sebab C is a product. But now you see plus B per A, heat formation of B. So, kenapa plus untuk B dalam example yang kedua? Because now, B is a product. Previous example, kenapa minus? Because B was a reactant. So, ini lagi satu reason why I said equations are really not fixed. Kamu kena faham how it changes according to your reaction. And then subsequently minus A per A technically heat formation of A. So, A punya memang sentiasa akan negatif sebab A will always be reactant. Tapi case B ni a bit tricky. Kalau dia ada dua reactant, B tu jadi reactant. Kalau ada case yang ada dua produk, uh, B tu jadi produk. So, that's where the confusion may be there in that scenario. Okay, so sama konsep. Kira heat reaction, uh, guna sub equation ni dan dapat nilai ganti balik dalam main equation. So, for example, katakan kita ada satu example sini. Let's say kamu nak kira heat of reaction for this uh, Haber-Bosch reaction. This is a Haber-Bosch reaction to produce ammonia. Okay, so let's say kamu nak kira berapa haba tindak balas untuk tindak balas Haber-Bosch ini untuk menghasilkan ammonia. So, first, you have to know lah the heat formation untuk nitrogen, heat formation untuk hydrogen, heat formation untuk ammonia. So, let's say dalam case ini, example, dia beri heat formation of hydrogen gas and ammonia gas are zero. So, sebenarnya, 
benda ni adalah betul. Kalau kamu tengok property table pun, untuk H2 dengan N2, heat of formation dia pada 25 Celsius, satu ATM adalah kosong. Kenapa? Because at 25 Celsius, one ATM, these two compound exist naturally sebagai H2 dengan N2. Means, dia tak perlukan sebarang haba ataupun dia takkan membebaskan sebarang haba semasa dia terbentuk pada 25 Celsius 1 ATM. Sebab, dia dah terbentuk semula jadi dalam bentuk H2 dan N2. On the other hand, ammonia, okay, ammonia doesn't exist naturally. Ammonia memerlukan negatif 11,020 calorie per mol. Maksudnya, untuk membentuk ammonia at 25 Celsius 1 atm, 11,020 heat will be released. Okay, uh, for it to form. Kenapa saya, tahu, kenapa saya kata release ataupun bebas sebab dia ada tanda negatif. Negatif means bebas ataupun exothermic. Positive means endothermic, memerlukan haba. Okay, so when you use this value to calculate the heat of the action, so you can see it become... Uh, 2 and H, uh, 2 multiply with heat formation of ammonia. Kenapa 2? Because stoichiometric coefficient untuk ammonia 2 over uh, heat transfer coefficient of nitrogen 1. Nitrogen gas is our A. Sentiasa compound yang pertama dalam persamaan tindak balas adalah kita punya A. So become 2 per 1 multiply with heat formation of ammonia minus uh, 3 over 1 heat formation of hydrogen gas sebab minus B per A. Kenapa minus? Sebab hydrogen gas is a reactant. Kenapa 3 over 1? Sebab stoichiometric coefficient untuk hydrogen 3. Um, heat transfer coefficient, uh, stoichiometric coefficient of nitrogen gas 1. So 3 over 1. Minus 3 heat formation ammonia minus heat formation of nitrogen gas. Okay. So when you calculate, you get negative 22,040 calorie per mole. So what does it mean? It means for this Haber-Bosch reaction to form ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gas, uh, 22,040 calorie of per mole will be released. This amount of heat will be released when you are forming ammonia from the reaction of nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. Okay. So done. Example to find heat of reaction. So again, kenapa kita nak cari heat of reaction? Sebab in our energy balance calculation, kita ada heat of reaction at reference temperature. So next one is delta Cp. So apa tu delta Cp? So again, we see the mathematics symbol of delta. So delta, as I told you, it means changes, it means differences. Beza. So, kalau perkataan beza tu kamu dah faham, differences mungkin tak faham sangat. Perkataan beza tu paling senang. Kita tahu beza tu mesti ada yang ditambah, mesti ada yang ditolak sebab dia akan melihat perbezaan kan. So, similar concept macam heat of reaction, pengiraan dia melibatkan uh, positif untuk produk, negatif untuk reactant. But, kalau tadi kita menggunakan heat of formation of the compound, for data CP, we use the CP value of the compound. So, CP tadi heat of formation. CP adalah uh, specific enthalpy ataupun uh, enthalpy at constant pressure. Uh, sorry, enthalpy at constant pressure, CP. Okay, so, using the CP of each compound, Okay, at 25 Celsius, kamu kena faham juga CP pun ada reference temperature dia sebab dia bergantung kepada temperature. Okay, so it become delta CP equals to D per A, again, uh, stoichiometric coefficient, uh, ratio of D over A, compound D over compound A, multiply with heat capacity of D plus C per A, heat capacity of C, CPC, minus, why minus? Because in this example that we are discussing, A and B adalah reacted. So, minus B per A, heat capacity of B, minus heat capacity of A. So, dia macam sama je tadi heat of reaction, tapi tadi heat of reaction, kita guna heat of formation. Kalau CP, kita kira guna CP. Okay, sama konsep, dia takkan melibatkan inert. So, again, sebab ni untuk address part yang reaction. Ataupun kalau kamu confused, kamu just ingat, equation tu will involve stoichiometric coefficient. 
Stoichiometric coefficient is only obtained from the chemical equation. Chemical equation will only involve compound in the reaction. Inert takkan muncul dalam persamaan tindak balas. Sebab tu data CP pun kamu takkan kira untuk inert. So next one, on the right hand side, if let's say now I have one reactant, two product. So kamu tengok yang berbeza, untuk B sekarang, it become plus B per A, heat capacity of B. So kenapa dia plus? Sebab in this second example, B is a product. So kita kira CP. So sama konsep, kita kira sub equation, kita ganti dalam main equation. So later I will explain lah, how do we... Uh, Solve this entirely on its own. Okay, so this example is to show the calculation, the sub-equation to calculate untuk delta Cp. Okay, so sama je konsep. Tadi kalau guna heat, uh, nak kira heat of reaction tu, kita guna heat of formation kan. Kalau Cp ni, kita guna pula Cp dia untuk kira. Okay, tapi uh, the stoichiometric coefficient punya ratio masih sama. The positive negative concept is still the same. So, you will be able to obtain the delta Cp as negative 10.12. So, you must understand kalau it comes to energy balance, the negative positive value is possible. So, mungkin, uh, maknanya logically, your numbers can be positive or your numbers can be negative, uh, which is normal. But, of course, you can check lah, make sure pengiraan tu betul. So, this part is quite tricky sebab uh, bila kita ada negatif positif ni kadang-kadang bila kita nak solve kita, we might uh, do some silly mistakes okay so now that I've already uh, recap or I've already taught you all the sub equation now we come back kepada apa yang kita sebenarnya nak buat okay again equation ni the main purpose is to correlate temperature conversion so meaning if you have your desire you already know your desired conversion your x you may use this equation to find the reaction or the reactor temperature or vice versa if you already know your temperature of your reactor you will use it in the equation in this equation to find conversion which is your x okay all right so let us try one example of a question involve the non-isothermal reaction. So uh, the uh, equation, the question not chapter 6 can be very long. Sebab information yang diperlukan sangat banyak. Kan? Kamu tengok tadi saya terangkan one by one. Kamu perasan information yang diperlukan adalah berlainan. Okay, so let's say we have this equation, this question. Uh, following reaction in a non-adiabatic CSTR. So if means non-adiabatic means... Uh, they, uh, there is a value of Q ataupun there will be heat supplied to the reactor or supplied to the system. That is the meaning of non-adiabatic. Okay, the endothermic liquid phase elementary reaction is as follow. So you see, endothermic, sebab tu dia perlukan harbor supplied to the heat, dia perlukan Q because tindak balas tu memerlukan energy or it need heat. So that's why I have to calculate Q because Q is the heat that I'm going to supply to the reactor. So the reaction is A plus B produced to C. Okay. The reaction proceed substantially to completion. So maksudnya, tindak balas ni akan berlangsung sampai lengkap ataupun maksud dia all my A and B will react completely to form my product C. Meaning, conversion untuk A saya, my X value is going to be 100% or 1. Means, semua A dan B saya ditukarkan menjadi C. So, kalau kamu faham konsep conversion, dia mesti berdasarkan A, reactant A. So, maksudnya semua reactant A saya dah habis bertindak balas lah. So, my conversion X is 100% or in terms of fraction, it is 1. In a single steam jacketed CSTR. From following data, calculate the reactor temperature. Okay, so dalam soalan ni, dia beritahu kita, kalau kita nak capai X 100%, which is 1, what will be my reactor temperature? So, berapa temperature reactor yang saya kena uh, ada, saya kena dapat, baru reaction saya mencapai 100% conversion. Okay. So, we will use the uh, energy balance equation. But before we go there, let us first see other information. So, first, we beri kita steam jacket area. 
jacket steam saturation temperature overall heat transfer coefficient of jacket so kalau kamu tengok ketan jacket jaga jacket ni kamu tahulah ada sebab jacket ni kan refer kepada heating jacket ataupun cooling jacket lah dalam kes ni heating jacket so definitely this calculation is correlated to calculating Q sebab Q heat supplied to the reactor must come from the jacket the heating jacket so the top three numbers tu untuk kira Q Next one, over uh, work done by stirrer. So in case ni, the, the question says we have to consider the work done by the stirrer, which is your WS, which is 63,664. Next one, heat of reaction. So di straight away bagi kita heat of reaction. So kita tak payah kira untuk case ni, kita tak payah kira sebab dia dah bagi directly untuk tindak balas ni. Uh, 22,000 BTU per pound mole. Okay, so the heat of reaction. Next one, dia beri kita table pula. So, in this table, they give us, kamu tengok ada component A, component B, component C. So, reactant A, reactant B, reactant C. Row pertama, feed. This is feed. But the unit is pound mole per hour. So, this question is basically using American engineering unit. So, you know American engineering, dia kan guna pound lah, dia kan guna Fahrenheit lah, uh, dia kan guna BTU lah. So, it's not something we are familiar because Ameri it's American engineering unit. So, but they put it as pound mole per hour. So, pound mole per hour, dimension dia, pound mole masih mole, dimension dia mole. Hour dimension dia time. So, mole per time, this is molar florid. And then, they kata feed. So, this is the feed molar florid or the initial molar florid or compound A, compound B and compound C. Tapi kamu tengok, compound C initial molar florid dia kosong which is logic because C is a product. Initially, C tak ada molar florid sebab C tak terbentuk lagi. I will not have the initial molar florid of C. I will only have initial molar florid of A, FA not 10. Initial molar florid of B, FB not 10. So, kenapa B pun ada molar florid asal sebab B is a reactant. So, done. Second row, fit temperature. The initial temperature of this compound before the reaction takes place, both are 80 Fahrenheit. Okay, so next one, heat capacity, CP. So, heat capacity at constant pressure. Okay, dia ada kot CP untuk A, CP untuk B, CP untuk C. So, now we want to solve the question. So, again, bila kita nak solve question ni, we will first then see first the main equation. Sebab kita kena solve one by one in the equation, baru kita boleh solve the entire equation. Dengan pemahaman dia, in this question, dia beri kita X 100%, they want us to find T, the reactor temperature. Meaning in the equation, the all the unknowns must be solved except for your T. T tu tinggal. Sebab T tu yang kita nak solve. So the first one uh, in the equation is Q. So we have to calculate Q lah. Sebab dia kata non adiabatic. I have to calculate Q. So Q equals to UA in bracket TA minus T. So U, the overall heat transfer coefficient was 150. A, the jacket area was 10. In bracket, your heat transfer fluid uh, inlet temperature, your TA is 365.9 minus T. T, I don't know. I do not know, right? So I leave it first. So then tutup bracket. Okay, so then I solve it but I will only solve yang luar bracket. Of course, when you want to solve uh, mathematics, there are many ways, okay? So certain ways you may prefer to buka terus bracket, terus kira. Some might tinggalkan dulu. Okay, so it depends on you. So for example, like me, when I solve mathematics question where they have ada bracket lah, ada tambah, ada tolak, ada multiple, ada division, I usually close the bracket first. Bila dia perlukan stages by stages, baru saya buka bracket tu stages by stages to avoid confusion. But again, it depends on each and its own method. Okay, so katakan Q tu saya tinggalkan dulu untuk cara ini dalam part ni. We go to the rest first. So next, WS. WS work done by the stirrer is already given as 63,664. So saya, kita guna je terus. Next one, FA0. So, FA0 from the table, we have already discussed FA0 was 10. So, FA0, 10. Okay, next one, summation theta i CPI. Okay, so summation theta i CPI, you have to first decide 
what are the species I need to include in the calculation? So, of course, only include the species that exist initially in the reactor before reaction occurs. So, you can see it's only compound A, reactant A, reactant B. I would not consider C, sebab C product waktu asal C tak ada. Tak kata inert, in the question, they do not discuss any other species or any other compound yang mungkin wujud sebagai inert. So, you don't have to consider inert. So, the summation theta I CPI will only include reactant A, reactant B. So, it becomes summation theta I CPI equals to CPA plus theta B CPB. So, again, technically ada theta A, just that theta A tu satu. So, kita dah tak kira, kita terus letak sebagai CPA. Okay, so CPA from the table, CP for compound A is 51. So next one, theta B CPB. How to calculate theta B? So to calculate theta B as I told you, pemahaman dia, initial amount of B over initial amount of A. Amount ni bergantung kepada soalan. In this question, they give us the amount of A and B initially in the form of molar flow rate. We know FB0, 10. We know FA0, 10 as well. So you can use this to calculate theta B. So theta B equals to theta uh, FB0 over FA0. So it become 10 over 10, you get 1. So theta B, 1. Multiply with heat capacity of B, which is 44, you will get summation theta I CPI as 95. So settle, summation theta I Theta I CPI, 95. Dan dalam bracket, T, again T tu kita nak cari, T tu kita biarkan. T not, the fit temperature was 80 Fahrenheit. So T not, 80. Pergi yang belakang pula. Minus FA not, FA not in the question 10 as we we discuss. X is 1, 100% conversion. Bila dah ada persen, kena convert dalam bentuk fraction. So 100% sama dengan 1. X tu, 1. Okay. Next one, heat of reaction at reference temperature. So heat of reaction at reference temperature in this question is already given as 20,000. So kamu tak payah kira dalam kes ni kita bernasib baik, kita tak payah kira. Kita terus tahu nilai dia adalah 20,000. So done. So kat bahagian belakang pula, delta CP. So delta CP ni kita kena kira lah. Kita tak ada cara lain, kita kena kira. So delta CP sama dengan... I have two reactants, A and B. I have one product, C. So, it become C per A, the stoichiometric coefficient ratio of C per A, multiplied with heat capacity C, minus, because B is a reactant, minus B per A, heat capacity of B, minus heat capacity of A. So, equals to, okay, you get the stoichiometric coefficient. You make sure you pick the correct heat capacity, you will get so happen dalam this example, data CP tu kosong. So, kamu kena faham tak semestinya data CP tu kalau dapat kosong. So, happen dalam example ni, data CP adalah kosong. So, kalau kamu perasan bila data CP adalah kosong, yang dalam bracket yang selebihnya, T minus TR ni automatically tak payah kira pun tak apa. Sebab kalau darab dengan data CP yang kosong kan terus kosong. So, part yang belakang T minus T R ni, kamu dah tak payah tengok, dah tak payah kira. Sebab, automatically when you multiply with data CP, which you have obtained as zero, the entire part yang kat belakang tu jadi kosong. Okay. Now that you have already known, dah kira all the sub equation, now you replace into the main equation as shown in the yellow box. So, first, yang... 1,500, 365.9 minus T, this is your Q. Minus 63,664, your WS. Minus 10, FA0. 95, summation theta ICPI. T, you want to find. 80, your fit temperature. Minus, another time, 10, FA0. 1, X. In bracket 20,000 heat of reaction at reference temperature, zero sebab data CP zero as we calculated. Then equals to zero. So when you solve this, kamu nampak kamu ada satu unknown saja T. 
Walaupun T tu muncul a few time dalam equation, tapi it's still the same T. Satu sahaja jenis unknown. So, you can solve this and you will get the reactor temperature as 147.4 Fahrenheit. Means, for you to achieve 100% conversion, your reactor temperature must be at 147.4 Fahrenheit. Okay, so... That is the example that we have addressed for the energy balance equation. Okay, now, uh, next part. Kita kena, again, look back at the entire perspective. Sebab tadi, saya mulakan lecture kita, we talk about design equation. Lepas tu, kita kata, design equation ni kita tak boleh solve sebab kita ada unknown T dengan X. So, we learn the uh, energy balance equation. So, now kita kena come back lah kepada design equation kita. Macam, how does this energy balance equation helps you to solve the reactor design? So, so maknanya kita tak boleh belajar in silo. Kita belajar equation tapi kita tak faham dalam konsep yang besar. How does it helps us to calculate the reactor design? Okay, so I come back. I capture it in a bigger way. Okay, so now let's say you have... Uh, dia ada dua senario yang berbeza depending on what information you have or what you want to find. Okay, so let's see now. You have a non-isothermal reactor, reaction, meaning kamu tahu reaction kamu akan ada perubahan suhu and kamu nak determine volume reactor itu. Okay, so let's say in dalam approach pertama, you have or you know your desired conversion. So, most of the time, when we talk about reactor design, we will talk about knowing what conversion that we desire. Okay. So, conversion ni katakan you're in your mind or in your uh, system, you would like to achieve, let's say, 90% conversion. Because, of course, conversion desired tu, of course, kita nak as high as possible. But, you know, it's technically impossible unless you guna catalyst ke, you guna certain thing to support to increase the conversion. But, from economical calculation, you can do certain calculation economically, kamu dah tahu at what percent conversion, you it will be economically feasible to run the system. Okay, so katakan at 90% conversion, you find it that it will be economically feasible untuk reactor kamu, untuk reaction kamu. So let's say kamu target reaction kamu mesti mencapai 90% conversion. So X, 90%, 0.9. So then you would like to know macam mana kita nak tahu reactor punya volume ataupun how do I know how much minimum volume I need for my reactor if I want to achieve that conversion. So first step is you will use your energy balance equation untuk cari reactor temperature kamu dulu sebab kamu tahu kan tadi kita kata conversion pengaruh temperature. So kalau saya nak tahu saya nak capai 90% conversion in my reactor, what will be my reactor temperature? Okay, so then, I will first calculate using my uh, energy balance equation. Okay, so then you will get your reactor temperature. So, from the reactor temperature yang sekarang you dah tahu, you can use the Arrhenius equation to find your K. Kenapa kena cari K? Reaction rate constant. Sebab dalam reactor volume yang calculation, kena ada nilai K. So, kalau dah tahu conversion, tahu reactor temperature, dah boleh kira K. Okay, using the Arrhenius equation. Dah kira K, then now you can calculate the reactor volume. Kenapa dah tahu? Minimum reactor volume yang saya perlukan. Kalau saya nak achieve the conversion that you targeted. So, this is the scheme. If you are talking about knowing desired conversion, wanting to know the volume reactor for a non-isothermal reactor. Okay, next. Second scheme, vice versa. Let's say now, you know your reactor temperature. Or let's say, you have somewhat a limitation of which you know uh, the temperature of your reactor has to be at certain range. Katakan limitation system pula. Okay, your reactor has certain limitation of which there are certain range of temperature of which it may operate. Sebab kamu tahu kan, uh, when you have the higher temperature it is, I think you know in a reactor, in engineering design, uh, reactions or any system that 
function at a high temperature, it will affect a lot of the engineering design, especially material, la, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's say you have limited range of temperature of your system. So you would like to know if I'm working at this range of temperature, what will be the conversion that I will obtain? So in this case, summer concept, you use the energy balance equation, you input your temperature that you according to your reactor limitation and you determine conversion yang kamu boleh capai. So katakan reactor kamu ni, you want it to operate at let's say 80 Celsius. So kamu guna energy balance untuk kira kalau saya nak run pada 80 Celsius, berapa conversion yang saya boleh capai or the maximum conversion possible. Okay, so that I get ready from the uh, energy balance equation. So step kedua, again, dah tahu temperature, saya boleh kira K. Dah kira K, third step, then I will now calculate the um, the volume of reactor that I will need ataupun minimum volume reactor yang saya perlukan kalau saya nak run this reaction pada temperature range ini dan pada conversion yang saya dah tahu apabila saya kira guna energy balance. So these are the two scenario that you will have to consider okay, when you want to talk or you want to know the in terms of minimum volume reactor you require okay, for you to run the reaction. So that is to recap back in the bigger picture how does this energy balance calculation helps you in the reactor design. Okay. So the last part of the this lecture just a little bit more uh, previously, we address non-adiabatic, meaning you're talking about when you are supplying heat or energy to the reactor. Remember, you got the jacket, the heating jacket, you want to supply heat to the reactor, that is considered as non-adiabatic, either Q or Q. Now, we talk about adiabatic. So, adiabatic means no heat loss or gain from the system. Or in this term, it means Q sekarang dah kosong. Okay, so how does it disturb our equation? So in a nutshell, dia tak kacau pun kita punya equation. Just that, part depan equation kita yang energy balance equation tadi, kita ada Q. So since ada batik, Q dah kosong. Hence the Q at the front part dah tak ada. So jadi 0 minus so on and so forth. So that's the only difference between ada batik, non ada batik. Kalau ada batik, Q kosong. Non ada batik, you have to calculate the Q. So I just now I show you the example. Kalau kita kira untuk CSTR, ada formula dia. Tapi kamu kena faham, kalau kamu guna sistem yang berlainan, kamu guna heat transfer fluid yang berlainan, so on and so forth, the calculation, the equation will be different. Okay, dia tak fix sebenarnya. Okay, so uh, last one for today, before we end for today, one example of a question, then we are done. Okay, so dia kata, Non-isothermal liquid phase reaction is given as below. 2A react with B plus C. Okay. Technologies is tasked to determine the suitability of a steam jacketed CSTR to accommodate the requirement given. Okay. So there is a reactant which is A and producing product B, product C. It is an adiabatic system. So, bila kamu tengok perkataan adiabatic, automatically it means Q0. You don't have to calculate Q anymore. So, even kalau diberi pun information to calculate Q, kamu just, kamu takkan ataupun you do not need to calculate the Q because adiabatic Q is 0. The additional information data given below assume work done by stirrer is negligible. So, meaning, Dalam energy balance equation kita, WS tu, the work shaft is zero. Sebab dia kata work done by stirrer, negligible. Determine the reaction temperature and subsequently reactor volume if the reaction obeys elementary rate law. So soalan ni ditambah sikit. Okay, so kita cari temperature of your reactor dan so kita cari volume dia. So again, Kenapa kita kena kira volume? Okay, so because that is the minimum volume of your reactor required if you want to achieve the condition that you have set in your reactor. Okay, so this information diberi, first of all, initial flow rate of A. So, kamu tahu kan, kalau mole per minute, mole per time, molar flow rate. Dia kata initial of A. So, F A naught 
2.85 to 7. Done. Next one, volumetric flow rate. So this is liquid phase. So epsilon not, okay, equals to epsilon equals to 10 dm cube per minute. dm cube is volume, minute is time, volume per time, volumetric flow rate. So volumetric flow rate ni initial ke final? Okay, so kamu ingatkan kalau liquid phase, initial volumetric flow rate, final volumetric flow rate adalah sama. Means in punya volumetric flow rate, out punya volumetric flow rate untuk liquid, halaju isi padu dia adalah sama. So epsilon not equals to epsilon equals to 10 dm cube per minute. Then they beri kita conversion of A, 70.11 or your X, 0.7011. So dalam soalan ni, sebab tu dia nak kita cari temperature. Sebab dia dah tahu apa conversion yang dia nak capai. They want to reach the conversion must be at least 70.11%. So then we will determine what are the reactor temperature that will, uh, what's the reactor temperature if you want to achieve this conversion. Then they give us reaction rate constant. They give you the K. The K but the K is at 350 Kelvin which is 0 0.45. So, in this example, they do give us the value of K. K kan tiga kali kita kan? Kalau reactor design nak kira volume, kena tahu nilai K. So, they do give us the value of K, tetapi you know, K kan specific pada temperature. So, dia beri K kita ni pada 350 Kelvin. So, can we use this value of K? Again, it depends. Sebab kalau nak kira volume, nilai K tu mesti pada reactor temperature. Now, kita tak tahu lagi. Kita kena kira dulu. So, kalau reactor temperature tu pada 350 Kelvin, let's say, then yes, we can straight away use this value. However, if later you calculate your reactor temperature is not 350 Kelvin, then you cannot straight away use this 0 0.45. You have to recalculate your value of K at your reactor temperature. So right now kita tak boleh decide lagi sebab kita tak kira lagi reactor temperature. Okay, next one, activation energy. So dia beri 5 kJ per mole. So whenever you see activation energy, you know it's going to be used for Arrhenius equation untuk kira nilai K. Next one, fit temperature. Your T naught, they give as 303.0 Kelvin. So they give us fit temperature, dia masuk pada 303 Kelvin. Okay, then in the table, they give us first heat of formation or enthalpy of formation. So they beri enthalpy of formation for A, for B, for C. Okay, so then uh, they beritahu juga enthalpy of formation ni pada reference temperature 298 Kelvin. So nilai enthalpy formation ni adalah pada suhu rujukan 225, uh, 298 Kelvin. So heat formation for A, heat formation of B, heat formation of C. So kamu tahulah kalau you are given heat of formation, it is used to find the uh, heat of reaction. Heat of formation akan digunakan untuk cari heat of reaction in the energy balance equation. Next one, CP, constant heat capacity. Okay, so they give again, this CP is given at 25 Celsius and they give you the CP for A, CP for B and CP for your C. So this one will be calculated for your delta CP dan juga untuk summation theta I CPI. But before we go further, we have to first uh, determine ada tak inert dalam kes ni. So when you read the question, they only mention for A, B and C. There are no mention of any other species that may exist uh, initially. So it's safe to say you only have one compound, reactant A and two product which is B and C. Okay, so how do we solve this? Dia nak cari reaction temperature, dia nak cari reactor volume. So first part, kita boleh dulu cari temperature using the energy balance equation sebab kita tahu X, kita dah tahu X 0.7011 hence I can use the energy balance equation to find my T first. So same concept, we do one by one. Okay, so first part, Q sebab adiabatik, Q dah tak payah kira kosong. 
WS from the question, they say negligible. So WS kosong. So next one, FA not. So FA not from the uh, question is given as 2.8527. So FA not settled. Next one, summation, theta I, CPI. So summation, theta I, CPI. Dalam example ni, hanya initially, hanya ada A. Sebab A is a reactant. So, tak ada inert. Okay, initially hanya ada A, tak ada inert, tak ada reactant lain. Hence, my summation theta I CPI sama dengan CPA terus. Just directly equals to CPA equals to 0.1 obtained from the table. So, dah tak ada kira untuk inert, tak payah kira untuk B sebab dalam kes ni, B adalah produk. Inert, tak ada inert. Okay, so settle. So next one dalam bracket, T minus T naught. T I want to find. So T I leave it. Uh, T naught, it was given as 303 Kelvin, your initial or ataupun your fit temperature. So belakang, again F A naught, again uh, 2.8527. X from the question 0.7011. Next, heat of reaction at reference temperature. So heat of reaction at reference temperature. If the example previously, kita tak payah kira dah diberikan. Dalam soalan ni, kita tak diberi. So, kita kena kira using the heat of formation ataupun menggunakan enthalpy of formation punya data. So, it become equals to C per A heat formation of C plus B per A heat formation of B minus heat formation of A. So, careful about the stoichiometric coefficient which student tendency to do a bit of mistake in this sense. So, if you calculate correctly, you will get the heat of reaction as negative 55. So, done on the heat of reaction. Okay, so next one. Belakang, delta CP. So, kita kira balik, kita kira delta CP. Tetapi, uh, konsep dia masih sama macam heat of reaction. Just that, kita guna CP pula untuk kira. And in this example, you get your data CP as 0.25. So, as I told you, you may get negative or positive untuk heat of reaction and untuk data CP, which is normal because it depending on your reaction. Just make sure you be careful and you calculate correctly. Okay, so dah kat bahagian belakang, T minus TR. T, I want to know. So, the T, I leave it. TR from the table, it was... 298 Kelvin. So, saya letak 298 Kelvin. So, now that I've already calculated all the sub-equation, I can replace into the main equation. So, Q, W, S, F, A, naught, summation theta I, C, P, I, T, T, naught, F, A, naught, X, heat of reaction, delta C, P, T, T, R. So, kamu nampak uh, dia part tricky ni sebab dia ada bracket, sub-bracket, addition, subtraction, multiplication, negative, positive. So, you have to really solve this carefully and then eventually you will get the reactor temperature as 439.9 Kelvin or in a simple word, for you to achieve the conversion of 70.11%, your reactor temperature must be 439.9 Kelvin. Okay, so next part. Last one. To find the reactor volume. So, jangan stop. Soalan tak habis solve lagi. Kita nak cari reactor volume. So, how to find the reactor volume? Kita kena start from one by one. So, first, uh, reactor volume formula dia, design equation dia, sama dengan Fa not X per minus Ra. Okay, then second, kita kena cari rate law dia. Okay, so rate law ni tadi saya tak discuss lagi. Kita pergi balik kepada soalan. Okay, dia kata reaction obeys elementary rate law. So, kalau reaction obeys elementary rate law, hence minus Ra dia equals to K C A power of 2. Sebab the reaction order follows the stoichiometric coefficient. Since the stoichiometric coefficient of A is 2, so the reaction is second order with respect to A. So, minus Ra equals to KCA power of 2. Okay, so now, you have to be very careful about the value of K. So, kamu ingatkan kalau dalam rate law, 
nilai K tu mesti pada reaction temperature. Okay, dia mesti dikira pada nilai reaction temperature. So, we have already calculated the reaction temperature pada 439.9 Kelvin. Okay, means my K here must be at 439.9. Okay, I cannot use K at any other value. Sebab K ni mesti pada suhu tindak balas. So, the K is at 439.9. Okay, so nanti kita address. Macam mana kita nak buat part ni? So, next one. C A. Okay, so again, we will express C A in the form of C A not in bracket 1 minus X. This one dalam chapter 3 kita dah belajar. Kita dah express C A in the form of C A not in bracket 1 minus X. So now, katakan kita nak combine. We have to combine kan? Equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. So saya jump tapi ke bawah sikit. Saya terangkan dulu. When you combine, Okay, uh, volume CSTR equals to FA not X per minus RA. Minus RA equals to KCA power of 2. And because CA in the form equals to CA not in bracket 1 minus X to top bracket. So it become KCA not square in bracket 1 minus X square. Sebab CA sama dengan CA not dalam bracket 1 minus X. So, kalau CA kuasa 2, jadi CA not kuasa 2 in bracket 1 minus X kuasa 2 like this. So, now kita dah kena solve lah kan sama konsep nak cari volume. The other unknown kat belah kanan ni, we have to solve. So, one by one we go. First, FA not. So, kita dah tahu FA not from the question 2.8527. Dan X, I already know as well, 0.7011. So, next one, K. So, K ni jadi masalah sebab kita tahu the K must be at 439.9. However, although we were given the value of K in the question, but the K is at 350. So, kita tak boleh guna nilai yang 0.45 ini sebab this 0.45 is at 350. I would need to find K at 439.9 Kelvin. So, how do we solve this? So, kalau kamu ingat, we learn in chapter 3. If uh, from the Arrhenius equation, yang version kedua, if I know K1 at T1, I can find K2 at T2. So, in this example, I know K1 0.45 at 350 T1. Saya tahu T2 saya adalah 439.9. Then, I can find my K2 using this equation. K2 equals to K1 exponential EA per R in bracket 1 per T1 minus 1 per T2. Miss equation ni akan membantu kita untuk mencari K yang pada 439.9. So you will get the new K at 439.9 as 0.6393. So I can replace my new K now. So then I'm left with uh, CA0. So CA0 you can calculate. I know FA not. I know epsilon not. I can calculate my CA not. Saya tahu um, molar flow rate, volumetric flow rate. I can calculate CA not. And you replace and you replace the X once more. You solve this, you will eventually get your reactor volume of 430.29. Okay, so in a nutshell, if you would like to conduct this non-isothermal reaction of which the conversion is 70.11%, your reactor will need to be at 439.9 Kelvin and the minimum reactor volume shall be 430.29 dm3. Okay, so that's all for our class for today, right? So uh, for the following two weeks, we will still have lecture. So next week, I can, I plan to finish lecture chapter 7, chapter 8. Chapter 7, chapter 8 is very easy. I can finish it, uh, these two lecture. And the last week, I will discuss the tutorial for chapter 5, chapter 6. Sebab saya nak habiskan this lecture, then chapter 5, chapter 6 tutorial tu, I have another class. I will combine and I will complete the tutorial lah for chapter 5 and chapter 6. Okay, so... That's all for today's lecture, right?